Let's take a look at the firmware of this Arteria Mini Lab 3 USB MIDI controller. It really helps when uh, reverse engineering software or firmware to have a clear objective. And for this video, mine will be to try and find out how the bootloader entry works. So that would be an important step if I wanted to find out how to reflash custom firmware. Okay, I'm going to poke around in the firmware update files. I actually started five minutes ago, but started forgot to start the capture. Um, so you get a, a MNL3 file, which turns out to be T for test, and it says uh, type zip, okay? And then X for extract, oops. And here's what I get, these two files um, with different file names, slightly different sizes, and also an info file, which looks like this, with two different product IDs. I'm not sure what these refer to, uh, the two different models or hardware variants, I don't know yet. I find it really strange to have a file size difference, but whatever. I can look at these in a hex editor just for a quick feel of what's going on inside I don't expect to recognize a lot here oh plain text I think yeah okay that's good plenty of text oh wow cool I'm also going to run binwalk on that same fire file, uh, this one, yeah. I like to look at the entropy graph. <clears throat> if it's a compressed or encrypted file, you're usually gonna see a uh, almost flat line at 1.0 with maybe a lower segment at the beginning or at the end. 0.8, that's usually code is around 0.8, give or take. So that's that looks a lot like plain uncompressed firmware. And this lower 0 0.6 flat area, that could very well be just the text. And I'm also going to run this without E. Well, I didn't find anything special, just a string. Speaking of strings, I'm going to run strings like this. Oh, well, there's a, I could give it a couple arguments to filter out. Like, I don't need to see four character strings with a special character. That's that's just garbage at this point. I'm just going to zoom through this, see if I see anything. Oh, okay. So, well, they clearly programmed some of it with C++ and left some uh, debug symbols in there or maybe error messages. Well, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, that's what is this? <laughs> Segment full. Okay, it's, it's using GCC for at least some, you know, maybe some libraries or modules. Not sure yet. Okay, that was interesting. What else can I do? Oh, yes, I could open the fire up the hex editor again and I'll try and compare both firmwares side by side. I don't remember this one has a... No, this one doesn't. I use two hex editors for some reason on Linux. There's not really any great options. So at a first glance, it's it, they're definitely not identical. I wonder if they're just different microcontrollers. Uh, let me see, let me see. Tools, compare files. Well, they're so different, it's, it's, it's not going to give me anything interesting but it only takes a couple a couple seconds yeah I mean <laughs> most of it is gonna be different yeah that's just a waste of time let's look at the the start here this is a binary file I don't know yet if that's if that ends up straight in the flash or if it's if it has a, a framing format uh, let's say for DFU or whatever SysX protocol, and actually I'm I'm sort of answering answering that myself. I see F7. Oh, actually, I like a 
I like Bless, the other hex editor, a bit better for this. Let me flip back to this one because I can highlight a byte. Oh, okay. I was looking for a sysx format which has a bunch of, uh, I think it's F7 and F0 markers for frames, uh, which I'm not seeing here. Oh, I do see this. This is interesting. That's a JPEG. JPEG header, I think. I'm wondering why Binwalk didn't pick this up. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, sysx. So I don't see any of that. What else is going on on the... I'm looking for anything that would look like a file size or a um, a reset vector for a microcontroller where I would expect to see some something like flash addresses. Um, little endian, that's probably what it would be. So let's see, what is this? 20B1C, uh, it's not helping me much. Um... Let's see, I'm looking on four byte boundaries. Uh, this, like some STM microcontrollers do have flash mapped at 8000 something, so that could be, I'm just grasping at straws here, but just getting a feel for the, the numbers here. I actually haven't taken this apart yet. It's a, it, it's gonna be a pretty easy way to figure out what's inside, but I'm just going through some things that are easy to check without without hardware access. Another tool I, I like to, to check out is, uh, is CPU Rec, Rec for Recognizer. It has a database of, of a bunch of uh, architectures, not not every, every one that we're likely to encounter, but still a, a nice slice. And let it run, it can take a couple of seconds. Okay, it took about 30 seconds. It's It found a chunk with ARM HF. Let me see what's that at offset 4000. And in this case, I recognize absolutely nothing at all. But it's it's a safe bet to assume it is. It is some ARM variant. Let's see if I can uh, take a wild guess. Since Arturia is based in France and ST has strong roots in France. Can I find any occurrence of STM? Okay, nothing there. What about uppercase? Mm, okay, what about just ST? No, that's not really... Alright, it was just a wild guess. For this next bit, uh, for some reason I don't have any audio, I'm just playing around with a DFU util. Uh, because there, there's a mode to re restart the keyboard in bootloader mode and it just uh, then shows up as a DFU compatible USB device and I messed around it I was getting some errors but I, which I thought were due to permissions which weren't set properly so I made some UDEV rules I to remember how to refresh reload those rules and tried uh, a few few ways to dump. I was hoping to dump the firmware from the keyboard. Didn't get any luck from there. Uh, I wasn't about to try reflashing it because there's a very real risk of, of breaking it at this point. Uh, yeah, mo mostly failures, but it was worth spending a couple minutes to try. And this one here doesn't matter. And I'm guessing at this point, I don't know this for sure, but odds are it's a small ARM microcontroller. Oh, goodness. Cortex, I think. Yeah, I think I want Cortex. It doesn't really matter because there's a lot of overlap between the instruction sets. What I'm really looking for is a little Endian, which is much, much more common. And any of those would probably work to some, to some extent. Uh, Cortex does have thumb mode, which is a shorter encoding of uh, opcodes. And ARM's naming for architectures is complete garbage, and I refuse to memorize it. So I'm just going to go with one of these. Options, base address. <clears throat> Based on what I saw in the, the hex file, uh, the, the, in the hex editor, I'm tempted to put something in here already. I already have a guess in mind, but I'm going to leave it as is, just to load it at zero. Because sometimes there's not much of a choice. 
No, well, let's skip that for the moment. <clears throat> okay, so because of the processor I chose, it, it already labeled these as vectors, but I'm not sure of these yet. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore these for the moment. What I want to see is these four byte values because pretty much all modern micro microcontrollers are 32 bit and most of those are little endian. So what I can do is uh, press B three times and it gives me a value of 8,000, well, whatever this is. <clears throat> and it really does look like a flash address if this were a an ST, ST microcontroller. Uh, hold on, I think there's a, I think I, press, I can press, oh, I haven't done this in a while, so. P, okay, yeah, I press P to declare it as a pointer, that's, more, that's better. Master stack pointer, that would kind of make sense. That's 2000, that's also uh, an STM thing. Uh, that, that points in a RAM. So I can't double click on this because there's no memory there. I'll show you the memory map. Because I loaded everything at zero on this first attempt. But what I can do is pretend that I had loaded this at, what is this, 800 and four zeros. And what I'll do is I'll jump to just the, lo the latter part, I'm going to ignore the top, so go to like this, and what I want to do is disassemble press D. I just want to see if this looks like sane code, and it kind of does. If I press F to declare it as a function, and open the disassembly, just make this a bit smaller, this is easier on okay cool so this looks like pretty clean disassembly um like Jido's not complaining about anything strange regarding the stack or un or invalid opcodes uh, follow along the disassembly see another reference to uh, something that could be in ram not necessarily also i got uh it's calling some functions these are relative jumps that's why it's jumping to something that looks valid and indeed also looks valid. Okay, so my guess of ARM ARM architecture is pretty pretty certain by now. And the loading address is probably eight 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 thousand or I don't know how to say that, but eight zero 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 and a bunch of zeros. What is here? I'm just pressing D here, declare another function. What I'm also looking for is an absolute jump that will give me a hint as to where all this block belongs in memory. So I'm just going to go like this for a little bit. And that could be all that I'm going to see. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I see. What is this? I see a number that starts with 0802 again. Let's see how is this used. Or be clearer with this. All right, so I think this is it. So what this does is it's loading a value from a literal pool. The literal, literal pool is at 8938, 8938, 8938. Uh, this is this one here. So it's just using this as a holder for this value. Uh, this is what it's showing here. So it's gonna load this value in into R2, and then it's gonna try and read something from R2 plus R3. And that's what we're seeing here. So this address plus, well, okay, I'm gonna think, have to think about this, but this tells me that most, most, most likely the flash load address is, well, whatever that was, the 800, I'm gonna find it again, find it again, cause I'm gonna need it in a second. So it's eight, okay, so it's zero eight, then, a bunch of zeros. What I also want to do at this point before I, I try again was is uh, go back. Oops, where where was I? Oops, not quite there. I'm using uh, Alt Left and Alt Right to navigate between jump points. So if I double click on this, then I Alt Left. I go back to where I was. Alt Right, forward again. Okay. <clears throat> so by default, GDRA, I don't know why it, why it does this, when, when you load a bin file, it marks that area as writable. And 
most of the time for firmware you don't want writable. So if I do this and close, I may have to reanalyze. Press A. Well, whatever. I can I can analyze this with the default options. I don't want media. Doesn't matter. Let's let's see it. Okay, it didn't change anything. All right. Well, enough. I'm gonna close this. Press I again. Open the same file. Import. Uh, Cortex. Little Endian. And oh uh, yeah, options. Base address. So I said eight zero zero, and that should do it. I'm gonna call this ROM this time. Okay, let's try that. Blah blah blah. I don't want to. Do, although, oh, I could have done that. Let's do it again. Okay, press A. The rest is probably all good. So, analyze. So it's going through and finding a, a load of functions. It's nice. <clears throat> now it doesn't know. Jidro doesn't know about this eight zero 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 being the reset vector. Probably. I'm still. I'm still guessing at this point. But let's try. A pointer. Oops. No. This. This would be one of the one or the other one. Okay, address. Oh, it thinks it's a string. Uh, very clever. Uh, press C to clear and disassemble. Mark it as a function. And this should get things rolling. Let's look at this again. Nothing much has changed. So let me go to that location that I wrote down. Oops. All right. Oh, it's it's calling it a data location again. I forgot to mark this as non-writable. Okay, and then analyze again. Hopefully, it should figure out that this is a table of pointers. And it seems like it doesn't. Hmm. In my first few attempts like like this, I don't mind deleting the um, undefined undefining functions and essentially ruining the the logic because I'm not doing anything that's irreversible I'll just close it and what I did was uh, delete and create it again because I'm only wasting five minutes and I like to have a clean analysis and use that only when I'm pretty sure that my my initial pa parameters were good which is not quite the case but almost I'm getting there see this disassembly again <clears throat> this looks uh, a return function on cortex is usually a pop that includes a couple registers and PCU the program counter if you keep this in mind and go to the top of the function uh, the PC is pushed automatically uh, no no sorry it's not so you do you push it manually four five six seven with LR the link register that's uh, something like that then the link register Contents that one is loaded automatically when you call something with. How do you call again? Um, I think it's just a branch. Uh, it's been a while. I think it, when oh BL branch with link. So BL will jump to this location and load uh, this return address into the link register. And if I go there, uh, 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 the return. Return opcode would be here. See where it pops. Anyway, going off a tangent here. And I keep seeing these addresses in, in this area, 2000, 07 something, 2000 something. Now let me show me what I meant earlier by this being a, probably an STM. So this is just a, a random data sheet from an STM32 chip that I've used. So it's ARM, it's 32 bit. Uh, it's Cortex M0 core. Uh, the M0 has a pretty simple instruction set. Uh, that may or may not be what they're using here. Uh, this one does have a USB device interface. So, I mean, it could absolutely be this exact chip. We're going to find that out later. What I want to look at for the moment is the flash memory, flash memory map. So you see main flash, this is on chip. So it's, it goes from 0800, so exactly what I had earlier. And then information block, that's not really important at the moment. Okay, memory organization. Yes, thank you. 
thank you. What am I looking at? Okay, it's just sort of backwards from zero. Zero would be the reset vectors. And on the STM, on at least the, the ones I'm familiar with, the area, the flash memory area is going to be mapped at zero. So accessing zero actually accesses this address unless you configure it to map to two other choices. The first one is somewhere in the system memory. So then some of these 1FF something addresses would be mapped at zero. And that would be used in special modes like the factory bootloader, the one that ST burns into the flash. And that's a pretty common mechanism. So they would map their block to zero. So then the reset vectors would point there and then it would do its thing. The other possibility that's not very, not as popular, I think, is to map it to RAM, which is at 200, uh, 2000. I should really find a name for this at, at 2000. So it could map RAM here at zero. So you could run, run code from static RAM, which is all on board. But for the moment, I can assume that static RAM is going to be at 2000. I'm going to make that assumption for now. So what I'm going to do is go in here, create this. One, two, three, four. Length. Um, well, I don't know yet, so let's let's make a pretty big area. Like this. Uh, this one I want read write. I don't want it volatile. Volatile would be useful a bit later once I know where the peripherals are. And I may get into that later. I'm not going to mark it executable, but because for the moment. I have no reason to believe that it's running code from RAM. Is it accessing any of the, these data locations? What is this? 200. Well, anyway, it's not complaining anymore. I don't know what it's doing either. I don't know what's going on wrong with the audio with that wind noise in the background. So I'm just going to voice over this part and skip ahead while I look at some strings puzzle about the the references that don't really line up and some other pointers that fall in the middle of strings and other weirdness i'm just going down in a rabbit hole and that's that's kind of how i usually proceed for a little bit i won't do this for hours and hours but i poke around and sometimes i'll i'll find something unrelated to what i'm looking for or or exactly what i'm looking for in this case, I was hoping to find some kind of print function that sends text to the display. Not that it really matters at this point. I'm not trying to, to do anything specific, but that's how I'd go about this. I'd try to find any references to these. So these are tables of some kind. And I, I really I really wonder how these are used. Because they all point to the same thing. I'm going to go up and see if there's a beginning to this table. What also bothers me is... Jeter created references to like this. It's not four byte aligned. All of these are. And on the smaller ARM chips, you can't just read a 32 bit value from from a random place. It's got to be aligned on a four byte boundary, like 48 or C. So why did this create this? Let me check that for a second. It loads a value into R1. It loads this value here. So it contains 802C. 805. What what is it gonna do with this? Oops. R1. Doesn't seem to be oh it's R1 is probably used as a as an argument for this function. That's pretty pretty usual. R0 and R1 would be the first. That's the ARM calling convention. So let's see what this does with R1. It's not clear what it's doing there. Okay. <laughs> Gonna give up on this for the moment. Has another unresolved mysteries, and that's really par for the course. It's gonna happen a lot. I'm just uh, backtracking back to this. Oh, firmware version. Okay, interesting. This is a printf formatter. I wonder why it's not hard coded. So let's see. Let's see. Is there a reference to that? There is no reference. Alright, so I think the bigger issue at the moment... Oh, I hate when a tutor does this. Before I created created that RAM segment, this whole area was full size, and I, I'm not sure if I can... 
I can zoom zoom into this. So it's trying to show me the entire address space that covers RAM. So temporarily, I'm gonna delete this. Uh, yes, blah blah blah. Just for the moment, so I can I see w what's going on here. <clears throat> so what's causing us problems right now is uh, Jira doesn't know about most of the code, the, like the uh, no red red areas. That's all most likely code, and part of that is due to uh, uh, probably not having the right entry point. So this code is probably not the one that runs when you power on the keyboard. There's most, most, most likely a bootloader in the early part of the flash, which uh, probably lives a bit before this, and it checks if you press the a special key combination to enter the bootloader, it probably does a few minor things like that, and it, it's usually not something you update ever. So is it this file being a firmware update? I, I strongly doubt that it contains an entire bootloader, like a replacement bootloader. It's also risky to uh, erase your bootloader to replace it. You kind of want to avoid that. So what I'm not sure is how how does a bootloader jump into this into this uh, let's call it user or main application code. <clears throat> it's also possible that. Well, I loaded this at 800, but I might have this slightly wrong. It could be 0800 and something. Like it could be an offset of a few few kilobytes. Like for instance, I'm seeing 880, maybe the first 8000 are for the bootloader, and it's going to be hard to guess that other than trial and error. And what I can also do is go through this, and I'm just, well, I can also look. I'm looking for data and just marking marking pointers. It's weird that these are actually it's not weird at all. I take that back. Okay, so on thumb, on arm, on the cortex cores in particular, if you jump to an address that has the lowest bit set, like you're jumping at an odd address like this, it marks it as thumb mode. And it's kind of stupid because this is only like this one, for example, the Cortex M0. It's necessarily thumb mode. That's the only encoding you have available, but you still have to have the compiler does that for you. It always sets the lowest bit, and that's why that's why it looks all all weird. And I had forgotten that detail. It just came back right now. So anyway, I could go about this and slowly build up my knowledge. And what I might do too is, I think you can. Oops go back to this one you can open it a second time and oops cortex please yes and let's say I load it I'm just taking guess I guess let's say 8000 like this and I'm going to name it loaded at like this this <laughs> is to keep them keep them straight uh, um, no, I don't want to analyze it right now. It's the pointer, 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 pointer. Okay, does this look like code? And it, it's calling a function, it's calling some more functions. Are these valid functions? Yes, they are. So what I did was offset the whole, that bin file, I offset it by 8,000, well, that's in hex, I don't know how many kilobytes, but... I offset it a fair amount, and it's still the code is still looking pretty sane. Um, it would fall apart if, if let's say I um, offset this by a couple bytes. Well, it should be broken, but a lot of these are relative jumps, so they're, they're still going to be fine. So I'm looking really for absolute, absolute locations again. I'm going to have to switch between the two of these. This is my first attempt, so let's go to... Yes, that's that's what I'm looking for, this. This little thing where it loaded a weird address. That didn't really look like anything. See, I tried to disassemble and... Well, it works, but it's kind of weird. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, most of this is uh, because I don't know what the bo bootloader does and I don't know where this whole block ends up. It's, it's going to take a while. So it's going to be boring. So what I'm going to do instead is open the thing up and find out exactly what's in it. So this is what it looks like on the inside. If I zoom in a bit, ta-da, it's an STM32. It's hard to make out here, but with the with proper lighting, it was a 32G0B0 something. So my guess was pretty close. A little bit of information on the ST documentation. There's, for every chip, there's, there's two documents. One of them is the reference manual like this one for G, uh, oops, wrong one, G0, so it's called reference manual, it's almost a thousand page, and it describes all the peripherals, you will need the data sheet if you want to know the pinouts, pin descriptions, the model differences, so for reverse engineering, the data sheet is not maybe as useful, but you kind of need it anyway. <clears throat> so for the G0B0, I want memory, no, memory organization, yes. Okay, this is the map I'm looking for. So it's similar to the F0 I was looking at earlier. One thing I want to look at is vector, oh, well, maybe not. All along, I've been assuming that this was reset vectors like assuming this was going to get mapped at zero. But because of the bootloader, I'm not sure if that's actually true. On the G0, and then let's see, let's look at something here for a bit. All right, I said you needed two documents, but it's kind of three and actually four. <laughs> I'm going to get to the fourth one maybe, but maybe not. The M0 plus so this this document applies to C0 G okay this one this one here G0 and this will talk about the core so you're going to have something about the instruction set and some of the core peripherals which we're not really going to need to look at except IO port that's interesting processor okay what I wanted to look at the reason I opened this is the exception model and that hopefully Yes, vector address. This is what I was looking at. So, on a power on reset, you get a, the exception type is a reset, obviously, and the vector address is 0, 04. This is something you have to look at for every processor you're going to be looking at because you can't guess this and it varies. So, let's see, 0, 04. What does that mean? Oh, I couldn't. It's very unlikely. E5A8. I'm thinking less and less that this is actually a, that this is a, a vector. I don't think this is a vector. Because M0 only supports the thumb mode, the one that I mentioned had the, exactly this least significant bit with one. Zero is the initial stack SP stack pointer. So this could be a stack pointer, but then again, it's got, it's an odd address. This doesn't make sense to me. Okay, on the M0 Plus, privileged software can write to the, to the VTOR to relocate the vector table start address to a different memory location. Some microcontrollers don't let you do that. So on the F0, which is a simpler core, I think it's just it's a plain M0. The the vector you can't you can't have a vector halfway through RAM or just somewhere inside your user code. It's got to be zero or eight hundred. Or no, I'm sorry, it's got to be zero and you can you have the choice of mapping either the main flash or the static RAM. But on the M0 Plus, it says you can tweak the VTOR. I don't know how to do that, but you could relocate the, the vector table. But I want to see how to do this. So VTOR indicates the vector table base address. Okay, okay, I think I got it. Address. Oh, this is good. This is very interesting. So the VTOR, that's the vector table offset, and it's at a fixed address, and this is this is gonna be good because I can take this address and try and find it in here. Or 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 I can 
uh, I'm going to make an address, a memory block there. And hold on a sec, how big does it have to be? Uh, fairly big. Like this. And this is, since this is special memory, I wanted volatile. And what volatile means is that for some of these reg registers, sometimes r just reading, as, that is writing then reading a value uh, has an effect on the hardware. But when GDRS sees a write followed by a read, for example, it says, oh, well, you're just reading out the same value that, that you just wrote. Let me delete that for you. So that's why by marking it volatile, you're saying, well, the memory contents could change. So don't make any assumptions. All right, well, there's no, no hard-coded references to this yet. I was hoping to see a, a label, but that's fine. I sure hope, oh, goodness. Well, okay, so that means I couldn't find any reference, so it's probably not tweaking the VTOR. All right, um, let's get back to where we were in the exception handling part. Vector table, okay, offset. So, close this. This is looking less and less like a vector table because usually what you'd have is for NMI of the non-maskable interrupt and the hard fault, that is at zero C, zero C, you'd have something meaningful and possibly you'd have the same handler for hard fault, you'd have the same for a couple of these because when you're not using an interrupt, like as a programmer, if you're not using say uh, the first 30 interrupts, by default, the handler is probably gonna be the same as hard fault because if for some reason the processor ends up taking one of these exceptions, you don't want it to end up in the middle of undefined code. You want it to just kill the processor, the processor and halt execution. So you're gonna have lots of duplicate entries and I'm not seeing this at all. Like for example, um, what is this? RAM pointer. Uh, what is address I'm at plus 50 like th these are all IR IRQs and like zero that's not I do something weird here though what is that let's clear that for a sec it's just I don't know what to think of this still unsatisfactory one possibility for this area is for this memory block, this whole memory block that I have, the point bin, it could be loaded at a totally arbitrary address and the bootloader knows where to look. So maybe the bootloader goes in here and checks this and uh, that's somewhere in RAM, then probably uses this data for some other purpose. And this is kind of looking like a, a good entry point, but it's, it's hard to guess. <clears throat> Let's look at uh, something else for just for fun. So this is a MIDI keyboard and it actually has the hardware MIDI port and that's a essentially a serial port and I'm fully assuming this to be using one of these USAR that's universal synchronous asynchronous or oh, receiver transmitter, there you go. And this has a bunch of registers and what it does is a full serial port, TX, RX, so what I'm going to try to do is find code that writes to these and some of these may or may not be used in a very direct fashion but these like the TDR and the RDR those are the transmit receive data registers and this for sure there's going to be a read from them well while I'm saying that you could configure the DMA peripheral and the DMA that's direct memory access that one could take care of copying bytes in and out but for the moment let's pretend that the code is doing direct access because that's a lot simpler to find. So what I want to see is where does TDR live? Uh, register map. Okay, so the way STM works is for a USART, there's going to be a set of registers and this is for one peripheral. You can see it's, it's fairly complex. And it says offset value. It doesn't mean that it's at zero. It means that this USART block of registers is going to live somewhere 
and that's somewhere plus zero is going to be the CR1 and so on and so on. And the one I'm looking for is, why am I not seeing it? Oh, okay, <laughs> there's two pages of it, that's why. Uh, so the two that I'm going to be looking for are 24 and 28. I'm just looking at this column, see peripheral. It could be six, one. Uh, it could be, <laughs> okay, so there's at least six of them. Now, if I had a bit more time, I'd go look at the board pictures and trace the pins that go to the MIDI port. And then I would go to the data sheet here, and go to the pin description, find out which pin it is. Uh, let's see, real quick, let's say if it was this one on PA0, then I would know, okay, so it could be use our 4TX. Uh, some, there's multiple functions. Like it could be if it was PB0, for example, I would have to check well, no, it would be pretty obvious. I could probably tell which if the pin is used as a receive or transmit function, but that would kind of help me narrow down. But I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is, this is all in the same general area and they're all contiguous. See, it goes, from, uh, I'm just looking at the lower four bytes. So 44 and 48, 4C, 50. So all these are going to be pretty easy to check if I go back here in my memory map and create uh, just a random okay 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 and there's no cross references I could go over the whole thing like this but that's not really going to work very well because as you can see I almost have no code defined okay I didn't find any direct access to the read or trend uh, the receiver transmit register but it doesn't matter so what I did instead was looking for look for the base register because there's multiple ways for the programmer and the compiler to encode that access. So it found one, let's see what that looks like. I want this one, yeah, that's better. Oh, very interesting. So 44 and 48, I recognize these because I had it open a second ago. So these are two USARTs, what else, what else is there? One, three, what's that? Oh, okay, that's uh, USART 1. So let's USART 1, 2, 3. I don't know what this is. And I have no code references. This is really a bummer, but this looks like a code. Now, oh, I could be misled because this, this is an absolute address. You can see it. It's an absolute address, but if I map this whole file wrong, then I can't jump to Well, I can jump to it, but it might not be the right thing. Yeah, I was just on uh, another tangent and Jeter crashed, so I'm just backtracking a bit. So I'm going to try and do what I did two minutes ago. I started at the top, way at the top here, and I'm going to go there. And I go down, and these functions were found, and they look, they look all sane. And what I'm going to do is I go at the end, and I am going to assume that this is probably a function that Jeter doesn't know yet. About so I'm gonna disassemble that. Yes, okay, so that's the one I was looking for. This one's kind of interesting. It runs a bunch of functions, then just waits. This could be either a failure mode where it cleans up a bunch of stuff and dies, but more likely that's probably initializing interrupts and possibly tasks. I don't know if there, there's an RTOS on this. And then it just waits and just waits for interrupts and that kind of stuff. So this could be the main loop, possibly. Oh, by the way, there I, I remember seeing a script that creates definitions in Jira for all these special registers because they're all documented. They're pretty common. Like even on the F0, I think it would be the same, give or take a few minor differences. It'll, it's going to be the same layout, just as a possibly different base address. So it's possible to automate, and I think it's been done before. When uh, reverse engineering any kind of firmware, they usually have lots of leads or different approaches. So the one I was just on was very interesting. So I'm going to go back to one I was I took a, a look at earlier, which is the, the strings here. And I want to see if any of these have 
references now or anything more interesting. So let's see that firmware updater. I'd really like to see what's that, what that's about. And there's still nothing. This is probably not code, like duplicate bytes like this. I, I don't think this is code because sometimes you'll have a, a bit of code there that references a couple of strings, but that's really not what it looks like. These, these do look like function pointers, maybe. They're pointing in the middle of things. It's like I said, this one especially, when you see plus three, that's usually a bad sign. Um, it's trying to jump in the middle of another constant. So this means my uh, file that's loaded at 8,000, that's probably not the right offset, like most likely the wrong one. But still, this can be useful to look at because the more clues I have, the better. More absolute addresses, that's good. If only, if I, if only I had the right offset. <laughs> it didn't recognize this. If I, I, I can jump there and, oh, that's good. Address not found in program memory. Very interesting. That means. That means that this is just out of bounds. Because if I go to the end of program memory, I just want to see the last address. Oops. Okay, I just wanted to find the last location. So 2E, 5E7, 2E. So you see, this is trying to access. So this is really confirming that the bin file needs some offset. What I could do is try to find well, it could be a pain, but try to find the highest hard-coded address there is. And that would give me a hint as to how much space is unmapped. That is, the firmware is trying to ac access some hard-coded locations here, which means this whole block would need to be offset by at least that amount. So, for example, 2EE18, 2EE18... And if I go back to that last address, which I should probably write down, 2E57, and that means I got at least, oh, interesting. My offset's gotta be at least 831 hex. I, uh, I usually look for, uh, for uh, nice looking numbers. This is not one of them. <laughs> So I'm looking at what's happening at, this is the end of the file, of the firmware update file. And I'm seeing interesting things where it's, that's the priority mask. You only tweak this when you're doing low level system stuff. And that's quite interesting. And it's disabling interrupts. Oh, see, oh, wow. Thank you, Tidra. That's very nice. Is current mode privilege? Uh, disable interrupts. What is this? What is all this noise? I see this address. What is this? Let's go back to the PDF for a sec. So it's 40002 followed by 2000. And that is flat. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. What is it doing here? I got sidetracked again. This is a perfect example. Reverse engineering is full of that. That's why you kind of got to keep notes and because it's easy to get lost and forget what you were looking at. Usually these registers for the flash peripheral, like you see a key, uh, what else, a flash status. You, you, you'll usually use these when you want to reflash, like if you're making a bootloader. Uh, some of these, uh, ECC, error correction, you might configure it. Uh, options, what is this? Okay, it's for watchdog stuff. Okay, so some of these are things that you realistically might configure in normal operations, but that's a lot. Oh, Key register eight. Key register. The following value, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, to enable programming reset. So you gotta be writing these special values. And is that what we're doing here? Certainly look like it. I see magic magic numbers here, like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is actually unlocking flash. Why? That's so interesting. I I would have guessed that any of this flash writing code would be in the bootloader. The only explanation I can see at the moment would be if it's using flash to save some some parameters that you want to uh, keep after powering down because there's no there's no external EEPROM. Well, I don't think there is. And this one, it only has these only have flash. Some microcontrollers have a block of EEPROM that you can more easily write to for for permanent uh, for user changeable parameters. But maybe this is usually using a flash page to save those uh, parameters. So what I mean by that is memory organization, page size. See, so it could put a set aside, say, a one two kilobyte page, which is nothing for the size for the amount of flash that this has, and just reuse that area. So you know what? Maybe that's what it's doing. That could be what we're seeing. Um, I don't need to get into this, but that's also an interesting lead. Let's exit that that rabbit hole for a bit and go back to... All right, here's where I was just before. I was looking at the end of the ROM or the, the firmware blob. I'm looking for hints. So I don't know yet what this is. So I'm not really finding any hints for the for the, the file offset. Taking a break from uh, that rabbit hole, I went back to my, to the original purpose of this project and to see uh, if I can figure out how to enter the bootloader mode. And I assumed that would have something to do with uh, special MIDI messages. And I'm just doing a voice over here because it turned out to be a, a lengthy and boring dead end. Uh, but I did look at uh, m messages for similar models by the same manufacturer because I I assumed that lots of the messages would be uh, very similar and I tried all, all kinds of methods not exhaustively but I, I went for the low-hanging fruit and really nothing nothing worked And another voice over here because the audio was just dreadful. What I'm trying to do here is uh, back to work on figuring out the file offset. My strategy now will be to um, artificially make the, um, the ROM block larger and reanalyze the program so that uh, Deidre identifies any references to that uh, non-existent ROM. So that means any absolute address that falls outside of the, the defined area, that will give me, that should hopefully give me a better idea of how much to offset the file by. Then I looked at uh, these last few references that still fall in the, in the flash area or the, 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 uh, the out of bounds flash area I eventually encountered this interesting piece of code. This is a for loop that copies a bunch of data from an area from a block of flash into an area of RAM. And this is very recognizable as the type of code that you would run, well, that you wouldn't write yourself, but the compiler would do for you that copies initialized data to RAM variables. And the, fo the following for loop clears another area in RAM, which is very also recognizable as the, the BSS clearing code. This then, since it's a for loop, I can, I can tell how much data it's copying from RAM. So by doing a bit of math, that means I know how, how far past this last reference 
and it has to belong to Ram. I end up with this number, which is not as nice as I was hoping for, but still, still promising. And ultimately, if we get the right offset, I expect that these strings will have clean references to them, unlike earlier where uh, the references ended in the middle of the string and all that. So this is looking a lot better. Firmware, oh, I have a reference to firmware updater. Okay. Why is it not finding? All right, what about, what about these? Mm, din through. Why, why does it have B3 just before? I don't get it. I think we're getting real close though. And I was just, just spent a minute here. So it starts copying at this point here. It copies all this into RAM. That looks a bit strange because this is a long, long, long list of pointers that stops here and it starts a bit earlier here. <clears throat> I wonder if I got my loading offset wrong again and the initial data from RAM should maybe start here. Uh, that would mean that I got my offset wrong by what is this? Um, six, six, eight, minus six, two, eight. I would have it wrong by, by 40. That's not impossible. That would mean that the load offset would be, oh, okay, eight, seven, C zero. That looks familiar. Let's go back for a bit. I want that function that this idata. So this is the unoffset file. This is that same loop. And it's copying 784 minus 4. And it's starting at this absolute address. Now if I go back to Calculator here, 803, 6628, plus 780. That's DA8. If I subtract the, si the size of the file, or the, the last byte of this file, which was 802E5E7, I got this, 87C1. So maybe the offset isn't 8800 but it was 87C0. Let's try that. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna not save it. And I'm gonna go back here. It's still there, but <laughs> third attempt. Let's try that again. Cortex, yes, options, base. 87C0. Oh yeah, loaded, 87C0, okay, yes, yes, <clears throat> uh, no I do not, what about this one here, oh, this is interesting. I see this, the sequence of data, I see 2002400. Now, let's take this number, oops. This converted to decimal, that's 100 and, what is that? Divided by the, it's 144 kilobytes. 144 kilobytes. Didn't I see that number somewhere? Well, that's end of RAM. So this is a pointer to end of RAM, and that's a very typical thing to do 
when you're initializing the stack pointer and the reason I'm thinking of the stack pointer is because of this 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 table this vector table I was explaining earlier this could very well be an initial stack pointer value at offset 0 which is offset 0 here and we got a reset an NMI hard fault so the reset would be this code here and if I right now I have no code defined if I do if I trigger disassembly here and I've had the right offset this is going to be the jackpot and it wasn't jackpot but it's it's not bad this is really not bad let's go back to this place here and let's try the NMI handler let's try that 9429, yes, where does it go? Branch? Oh yes, well, yeah, that's an NMI handler. So, if you have an unmasked interrupt, it branches to itself. That kind of makes sense. What is this? Um, and this, 942A, that's also an endless loop. Now, can I find that little bit of code? Oh yeah, see, this is, we looked at this code just earlier, it was, oh no. Okay, it looks all wrong because I forgot an important step. I keep forgetting this. See, that's our uh, initial data, and does this look saner? And yes, I think I got the right offset. See these, I'm looking at the gray column, these are all pointers. I was looking at these just a bit earlier in the wrong, well, it's closed now, but... This really looks like the data that will end up in a RAM. I think I finally got the right offset. Jeez. Yeah, okay, okay. What else can we try? Strings. Yeah, that's kind of the ultimate test, isn't it? Mm, oh, there's no strings because I didn't run a full analysis yet. Let's uh, fire off the analyzer. Seems to be doing pretty well. Oh, look at that. Now the real test. Can I find code that prints a string? Um, oh, this is good. Okay. This function selects a message to print, and then when it's done... So this is most likely some kind of printf. Sometimes uh, you'll have code that uh, loops through a table of functions or function pointers and call each of them by turn, but I... Okay, let's try some other strings. These were a bit weird. Let's go to something a bit more, more common, like arbgate. Okay, I'm getting cross-references. Another table of strings, but this one has See, now that's, that's more like it. See, now this is a table of strings, and it's indexing into it. So that's some ARP code. ARP something. I see arpeggiator. It's printing. So that could be another print function. Does it come up often? What does it do? Let's call from a couple places, not that many. Let's go back a bit. Yeah, I'm just heading back to this firmware updater string, which is kind of puzzling me. This looks like different operating modes for the whole thing, for the, the whole keyboard, uh, with a string ID. I, I called it string ID, but it could be modes because I see some duplicates there. So let's see where this one is called from. Oh yes, I was here earlier. Did I look for absolute references that I forgot? Nothing. Okay. Uh, but sometimes these tables start a bit earlier, so I'm gonna try a couple more. 80368C. C. Nothing. Um, 
I'm grasping at straws. But that's what this is all about. Oh, I just thought of, thought of something. I was looking at these numbers and I thought they looked familiar. Uh, so if I look at this, for example, I'm gonna write that down so I'm gonna forget. Oh, I forgot to... Um, so that address we were looking at is in this block of data that gets copied to RAM. So that's why I couldn't find any cross-references. So, what I want to do is this address, 8036890, uh, relative, oops, relative to this, which is the start of the uh, initializing data, so, 8036828. That's an offset of 268, which I'm going to add to the starting RAM address, uh, which is just 4. So you can imagine there's 200026C. Now, if I go to 6C, ah, get out of there. 026C. And there's no references. Hmm. It's a bummer. What if I analyze again? Ah, there we go. <laughs> what a coincidence. So this is a mirror of... I'm going to write that. Ah, that's pretty smart. I can double-click on this and it'll bring me back. So that's, that's pretty nifty. So let's see. Let's see what this does now. That'll be interesting. Um, it's not as clear as I was hoping. Like, not even close. Well. Anyway, it was a good, good thought. Um, what I've done sometimes is, uh, when I see that pattern, let me just go back to the reset handler, this one here. When I see this pattern of some flash being copy uh, to RAM, this is initialized data, what I'll do is I'll do a bit of work or a script to copy that data so that inside the disassembly instead of uh, question marks and in this area I would see the proper data, so that'll be for another time, I think I've done enough for today, more than enough uh, Just to finish up, this is the next day and I did the, the very best thing you can do when uh, reverse engineering any kind of <laughs> bigger project is give it a rest and come back a day or two later. So at the beginning of the file, which we loaded at, at, at 87C0, there was this data which I couldn't figure out. It's not, it's not a pointer, it's not code, it's just weird numbers and then there's this that I don't recognize either and then we had this pointer to... oh today. Oh, this is fine. Pointer to the reset vector, and this was this was all sane, very nice. Uh, this I don't know what, and then a bunch of zero padding. And that just, uh, it just had a flash. This is probably a header that doesn't end up in flash at all. And here's what it looks like in the hex editor, and I'm looking at this block of uh, this data here, I'm just looking at the, uh, the selection, so 0x40 bytes, and so let's keep this in mind, this chunk of data, which isn't code and doesn't really make any sense, and let's pay attention to this, these constants, because I had a flash when I opened this, this file there, Vendor ID 1C75, that's a USB vendor ID, and product ID 523 and 87. Those were a bit weird until I opened this again and said, oh, I wonder, 8715, that's 220B, and the other one, 523, that's 020B, and that's the USB product ID, simply. And if I go back to the hex editor, I see 1C75, well, it's going to be easier to look at down here, and little endian 1C75, so that's the USB vendor ID, that's the USB product ID, so these bytes are taken care of, 
then what do I see? I see zero, zero, blah, blah, blah. Then what I almost always do is when I have a file like this and I know it's file size, in this case, 308D7, I try real hard to find any references to a number that looks like this. And I see right here, little Endian again, 030898, which is awfully close. And if I put the cursor on it here and I see it decoded as a 32 bit, I see 30898 and go back to the calculator. Let's take the file size minus the, this constant. I see it's a difference of 3F, which happens to be that header size that we guessed. So it's looking a, a lot like uh, something that either the software uses or that the, f the bootloader checks when it's incoming just to make sure it's got the right payload and so that it knows how much data to expect. So then we have an explanation for all these. Then what, what do we have after that? <coughs> Four zero one. Let me go back to my to my notes here. I had these written down. Firmware size. Okay, some unknown data is that. Yeah, offset zero eight. I didn't figure out what this meant. Zero one f four. Just a couple bytes. I don't know. Then we have this. This is our eight zero zero eight. That's our vector, our reset address. And then we had three f f f seven. Um, which is weird because it's not like why does it end with a seven with a seven instead of an F? I don't know. I didn't figure that one out. Then I had a bunch of padding, and then the last byte, last byte was this one here, and I didn't check, but I, if I had to bet a penny, I would say that's probably an eight byte checksum of the whole thing here. Okay, that's enough. Congratulations if you somehow managed to listen to all this stuff. Uh, believe me, it was even worse during editing for me. I had about three hours worth of footage and it took forever to try and reduce that to a reasonable duration. I hope it was worth, worth watching. Hopefully uh, somebody learned something from this. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this this format, if it was too long, too short, too boring. And I'm going to look at those and decide if I, I make any other of these videos. It's, it's a lot of work. I don't mind filming when I work, but the editing just takes forever. So we'll see if, there's, if this is a, the first and last video like this. Thanks for watching.